The exhibition is called Roy and Maru, and it's a work by Brian Duggan. He's made an installation which is taken from the story of the Royan Maru, which is a fishing vessel that was cast adrift during the Japanese tsunami of 2011 and in the ensuing 391 days floated its way from Japan to America, undetected in international waters, not seen by anybody, until it was finally noticed off the Alaskan coast and eventually sunk to the bottom of the ocean. It's a really fascinating story coming from this incredibly tragic moment that was that 2011 tsunami when 20,000 people lost their lives or went missing. And in the installation you hear the voices of people who survived and, and what it was like to be in the tsunami, what the material and perhaps sometimes aesthetic memories are of that moment. And they come from real testimony that journalists then took and crowdfunded a translation campaign, which is how we managed to have them today and also an animation that shows us visually and brings to life, I think, in the imagination, the tides and currents that could well have bore Roya and Maru on her journey through the Pacific Ocean. Something I think that's really key to this work is that it's born of tragedy and the tragedy not only of the tsunami, but also of the meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear power plant following it, which was a catastrophic event in and of itself that sent poison into the ocean currents and into the biosphere. And that sort of radioactive poison is not necessarily something that many of us can tangibly understand or put a finger on. So I think in the story of Royan Maru, which is an enormous fishing vessel, comes that idea of radioactive pollution and that pollution could have gone on a similar journey to that which Roy and Maru took. Something that Brian and I discussed quite often was that idea of the borders and the responsibility and who is responsible for what form of energy, form of control, decision, trade, really doesn't matter at all when radioactive pollution seeps into the tides. So as well as this idea of an enormous hulking 50 meter long boat going through international waters, with all those satellites in the sky that are watching us and that we're talking to with our mobile devices, and none of them saw it, is also the idea that this other, much more insidious form, which is the radioactive pollution, could have been charting quite a similar pathway.